So how do different debts affect my application? So we get this all the time when we pull a credit bureau and we take a look at all the different monthly obligations that our lenders have. So uh, we wanted to break it down in really easy terms for you to have you realize how certain debt reflects on your application. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at is when you're buying a property, what type of lender are you using? Are you using a private lender that's gonna have an interest only payment? Are you using an institution like a B or an A that's gonna have a more uh, principal and an interest payment where you're actually paying down your principal? What is up YouTube, Matt McKeever here with another Finance Friday with the Finlay team and I'm really excited for this video in particular where we're going to talk about debt consolidation as well as how to refinance a property. A lot of people have watched my videos on BRRRRS and it sounds great but they're not really sure how to actually do the third R in the process which is the refinance. And so the refinance is absolutely critical to the BRRRR investment strategy. So in today's video, the Finlay guys break down for us exactly how to go about the refinance process, whether you're doing a burr or just looking at trying to tap some un, you know, untethered equity in one of your properties. We're really gonna get into some technical details today. I hope you guys are enjoying these Friday Finance with the Finlay team videos. If you guys are, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button if you're new, and let's dive into it with Josh and Aaron. Hey guys, it's Josh Finlay, Aaron Laycock from the Finlay Mortgage Team and today we're going to talk to you about debt consolidation and refinancing your investment property. Mm -hmm. So let's just start off and you know like why is debt consolidation important? So we're gonna, just going to take a look at the two ratios that we consider when we're running an application for our buyers. So we're going to start with the first two, GDS and TDS. So GDS is going to be your gross debt service ratio and essentially it is your gross income required to cover all of your home related costs. So your mortgage and interest payments, your taxes and your heating. Um, so let's take a look, AAA on the CMHC side, um, as of July 1st, CMHC has kind of segregated themselves from the insurer, so they have slightly different um, GDS, TDS regulations. So with CMHC, um, 680 credits required and your GDS, you're limited to 35%. Genworth and Canada Guarantee, uh, you have a relaxed and a, stress, and a, a strict ratio. So if you have a credit score between 600 and 679, you're gonna be um, qualifying at a GDS ratio of 35. And if your credit score is above 680, you're gonna be using 39% GDS. And so for our B lenders, the reason why we go with a B lender is because they offer a little bit more flexible solutions than a regular A lender would. So they offer between 45 and 48% uh, GDS. This kind of helps with your a little bit extended or if your income doesn't quite qualify for a triple a solution so to cover your, the second ratio that we're going to take a look at is your total debt service ratio so this ratio is basically your gross debt service plus all the outside costs that you're going to incur throughout your life so for example if you had all of your house payments you would also take into consideration your line of credit payment your truck payments uh, your credit card payments and any other contractual debt payment that you'd have to take a look at now this ratio is a little bit higher than what your gross debt service ratio is depending on the lender so for a triple a lender so like a, a first national or a, a bmo bank they're going to be offering you 42% uh, GDS. So that ratio also changed when CMHC came out and changed the regulations uh, a little while ago. Um, Genworth and Canada Guarantee did not follow suit. So depending on your credit score, if it is 600 to 679, you're allowed to go to 42% of your gross uh, total household income. And if you have a credit score above 650, then you're allowed to go to 44%. So having a higher, a higher debt servicing ratio is actually going to allow you to qualify for a little bit more of a home but having that extra credit score that higher credit score is it's almost like a bonus to be able to get that extra little bit of TDS in your calculation yeah absolutely and then on the B lender side we can actually push that total debt service ratio up to 50 so that gives a lot of advantages to our investors specifically because that TDS ratio includes your lines of credit so you know we know a lot of you guys are using your lines of credits to uh, put some renovations down that's where that's going to come in a benefit for you so how do different debts affect my application so we get this all the time when we pull a credit bureau and we take a look at all the different monthly obligations that our lenders have so uh, we wanted to break it down in really easy terms for you to 
have you realize how certain debt reflects on your application. So for example, a secured line of credit. So if your credit uh, that a bank is extending to you is secured against an asset like a home, for example, um, or a car, um, that secured line of credit, we're going to, if it's not a contractual payment, we're going to be using one and a half percent of the outstanding balance that is currently on the, the line of credit or the card for um, your TDS and GDS calculations. Now, if you look at unsecured line of credit, we actually have to use 3% of the outstanding balance. Now, as you can see, that can be a huge difference in your qualification. So being able to juggle between a secured and unsecured credit, um, you're obviously going to want to have more secured credit and, and, and less unsecured credit because if you're trying to qualify conventionally, you're going to want to have, make sure your TDS and GDS ratios are aligned. Mm -hmm. Um, and then for everything else, car payments, you know, we're just going to use the exact contract payments. Uh, one other thing to kind of think about too for you students out there, OSAP payments, uh, we're going to be able to use just a contract payment, but if you do have your student line of credit through the bank, um, you are probably going to see it using a 3% of that balance on there to qualify. So just keep that in mind as well too. Yeah, it's really important. It has to say student line of credit underneath uh, your your credit bureau or else they are going to make us use an unsecured line of credit and that three percent can be a deal killer yeah absolutely um so we also want to talk about some of the changes that we're starting to see with lenders just due to covid and uh risk reduction on the lenders behalf so a lot of lenders are limiting just free equity takeout to about seventy five thousand dollars so free equity takeout being it's not being directed anywhere by a lawyer it's not going in into any bills um you know maybe other home purchases it's just you're just looking to take out cash um essentially lenders are are really looking to reduce unnecessary indebtedness through uh, larger mortgage payments through your refinance. Um, when you go ahead to refinance, if you have debts that you're looking to pay off, uh, the lenders are going to want to see, you know, some sort of quote from a contractor. They're going to want to see bank statements showing your balances. Um, if you're looking to, you know, purchase a home or another property, they're going to want to see a purchase and sale agreement. Um, even cars, you know, they just want to see that you have the money going somewhere and you're not just kind of taking that free cash out to spend it as you want. Uh, and then one last thing too, um, especially on rentals, we've seen a lot of lenders cut back the loan to value on the refinances. Um, a lot of them are starting at 75% now and we'll do 80% kind of on a case by case basis and the strength of the applicant. Um, and just moving forward, we want to kind of run through you guys on the BRRRR strategy and just how some of this refinance and debt obligations can come to play when you guys are um, doing your BRRRR strategy. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is when you're buying a property, what type of lender are you using? Are you using a private lender that's going to have an interest only payment? Or are you using an institution like a B or an A that's going to have a more uh, principal and an interest payment where you're actually paying down your principal? So again, obviously private, interest only, you're not making any payments towards the principal. Your balance will be the same at the end of the term. Um, you know, what we want to do moving forward is we're going to want to make sure you have an exit strategy. You're going to need to make sure that we have 25% equity in the property at the time of refinance. So if, for all those people who are maybe getting a vendor take back or they're going to 90, 95% loan to value with the second mortgage, it's really important that your exit strategy includes this specific um, loan to value because if you're looking to get out of that solutions-based lending and into institutional lending, it's important that we have that 75% uh, loan to value equity position for us to be able to get you into conventional lending. So it's great to be able to get into a property, but you know it's even better to be able to take that next step and be able to start paying down the principal of your mortgage. Mm -hmm. And a couple other things to think of when you're first getting in your purchase as well too and you're keeping your exit strategy in mind. Um, you know, what is your current income situation? Um, a lot of people have been laid off from COVID. Do you want to get control of your financial life? Do you want to crush it in real estate with wholesaling? Do you want to join my full-time team of wholesalers like Mike or Shahir or what about Tyler or Diego or what about Amar? All right, and what do we do boys? We make offers, we buy fast, never gonna miss a deal because we pay cash. Offers, 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 deals, deals, deals. Tell us Mr. Seller what price you feel because we're Southwestern, biggest source of deals. Boom. So if you guys want to crush it, with wholesaling, you need to join my team. And down below, video description, there's all the links you need. 
And a couple other things to think of when you're first getting in your purchase as well too and you're keeping your exit strategy in mind. Um, you know, what is your current income situation? Um, a lot of people have been laid off from COVID. Um, some people have taken that time to leave their nine to five and invest you know, solely in their real estate game. You know, if you don't have two year verifiable income um, and tax verif verifiable, you're not gonna be able to use or you're gonna have troubles using that income when you go to apply for your refinance. So keep that in mind um, and that's gonna come into play. Will you need a joint venture partner or a co-signer who has verifiable income that we can bring on to strengthen your application. But also keep in mind that bringing on joint venture and co-signers, you're gonna be bringing on their total debt as well on the application. So you're gonna to wanna to pick your partners wisely. So when we're looking to, to renovate, if you're using the refi to pay, you're gonna make sure that there's actual quotes. So depending if it's institutional or if, um, if you're with a B lender, they're gonna to wanna to see quotes on the work that's being completed. Um, so you're gonna have like an as is, so the value of the property as it stands right now, then as complete value of when the, when the renovations are complete. Um, if it's a line of credit, remember how they, uh, how they change your application. So if you're using a line of credit, um, you're going to want to keep in mind that if it's secured, it's gonna be one and a half percent. If it's unsecured, it's gonna be 3%. So something to also keep in mind is when you are refinancing, if you are paying out that line of credit through your refinance, the lender can actually condition it in the mortgage to have it paid off directly at closing, which um, will mitigate and take out that, act, that debt out of your debt service coverage when we're qualifying for the loan. Um, small construction loans so um, if you, they need to be refied out just keep in mind that um, different construction loans have different loan to values that certain lenders look at so if you're doing a, a big construction loan it may be a little different than uh, than what, what maybe like somebody who's redoing maybe a single family home to a duplex would be mm -hmm. Uh, so moving forward, when you come into you know the rent aspect, um, you know proper cash flow. You guys know about this, and, and that's something that's preached a lot. Uh, it's obviously essential to moving forward um, on the refinance and on your next purchase because you're going to be able to use those rents to help offset and debt wash your properties in the future. Um, so obviously looking for tenants that are open to you know a rent increase and, and they staying on the lease. Um, also vacant possessions allow you to go in, set the rent, and pick the app, uh, the tenants that you want living in your property. Um, and if you guys have some situations where you know, you're looking to change your rents and, and set rents, um, we have some debt service coverage ratio calculators that we use that you know, we can specifically um, backtrack way, our way through the cost so we can take a look at what your insurance is going to be and your monthly um, mortgage and interest payments um, and your property taxes and figure out where does your rent need to be to be able to get you at the, at the SCR of 1.1 to 1.2. When we're looking at refinances, we're just going to touch on it again from when we spoke about the birth strategy earlier. You know, these specific parameters that lenders have put on um, for the seventy-five thousand dollar cap isn't like a hard isn't a hard limit, and there isn't a, a start and end date to it. You know, when things start getting better with the economy, we expect things to go back to the way things were. Usually, it was roughly around two hundred thousand before they started asking any questions. So this is just kind of something that we're dealing with right now. So when you are refinancing in your birth strategy, it's important to keep in mind that um, unless you have specific quotes or money allocated to be able to um, show the lender. 75,000 is the max you're gonna be able to pull out right now, guys. So just keep that in mind. Um, they're gonna want proof of payment for the payouts and uh, the, the, debt, the down payment can't be essential moving forward. So um, if you are looking to qualify, and you have those debts that are outstanding, you need to make sure that some of, the, some of these funds that are going into, that you're taking out of the property are going towards debt repayment. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, so one other thing that we wanted to show you is just a few examples of the three most common lending scenarios that we're seeing on the investment side. Um, so the most common we see is you know, an 80% loan to value with typically a B lender just because of the offsetting programs it has. So we're gonna use a purchase price of 300,000, uh, 3.69 interest rate, a one year term and a 30 year amortization to help reduce those payments. So your initial loan is gonna be $240,000. Uh, keep in mind, you're already at 20% equity with your down payment. We're gonna need to be 25% to be safe on a refinance. Uh, so we're gonna wanna make sure that equity is in there. So your balance on your, on your mortgage after the first year, you're gonna have 235,519 left. So if we take 235,519 and we divide it out by an after repair value of 315,000, you guys are just under your 25% equity to be able to refinance. And that's not recouping any of your initial investments or having equity to pay off any other lines of credits. This is simply just enough equity to take that uh, mortgage and maybe refinance it either at a better rate or possibly an A lender uh, if the application fits. All right guys, the second situation we're gonna take a look at is the 
private mortgage option. So you found a home, uh, you couldn't necessarily get into it conventionally, so you found a private lender to, to give you money. You were at 80% loan to value. Your purchase price was 300,000. This is an interest only mortgage, meaning at the end of the term, you're still gonna owe the $240,000 in loan amount that you had at the start of the mortgage. All of your payments were interest only made to the lender on the deal. Um, after the single year, you're going to have $240,000 and the uh, as complete value is going to be $320,000, meaning you're going to be 75% loan to value. You'll just be hitting it uh, when you're executing for the single year. And again, that's just enough equity to refinance. Uh, you won't be looking at recouping any of your uh, investments. Um, and then our last uh, situation that we've been coming into is, um, you know, a private mortgage with uh, a pro piece of property or a couple pieces of property put up for collateral to help get that loan to value to 90%. So that saves you a little bit of cash up front on a down payment. Maybe you want to use that towards renovations. So again, purchase price of $300,000, uh, still an interest only private mortgage. Your loan amount at 90 90% is going to be $270,000. Again, balance after the one year is going to be that $270,000. So if we take a look, you know, your after repair value is going to have to be $360,000 just to be able to get you back to that 75% loan to value. Um, so what we just wanted to do is kind of show you, you know, how does the amount of equity you're going to need kind of change in each scenario. Um, once you start moving into those interest only payments, um, because they're such a great option to get into the property, you, know, you do need to have a little bit more equity put in, you know, via sweat equity into the property to help bring up the equity and get you into the ability to refinance at least a B lender. So specifically for this one and this one, you would have to have a strategy to either raise the value through renovations um, or, or having money on the side to be able to do a, a flip really quick. Like the, these specific solutions require that you have some sort of way to bring the equity up within the year. Mm -hmm. Because if, you're, if you haven't done it within the year and you aren't the 75% threat threshold, then we're going to have to either renew you into that specific mortgage or we can get you into maybe a B with like a, a small second behind it. But again, that's, you start looking at fees and stuff like that. So the best thing to do is probably just to try to figure out the after uh, repair value and then try to bring that equity up. Yeah, and it just goes back to having that exit strategy to begin with. Um, you know, at least if you have a ballpark of what you're looking to have your after repair value come in, we can kind of work off that and at least have an idea as to where you're gonna end up after your first term. So yeah, so hopefully you guys can take uh, some pretty good value away from that. If you guys have some properties that you're looking to get on and you know you wanna make sure that that value is gonna be there for the refinance, um, you know, feel free to reach out to us. We can definitely take a look at the numbers and kind of walk you through. We'll talk about your exit strategy um, and let you guys know you know, some things that you might want to improve on or consider moving forward before your purchase or before your refinance. Yeah, perfect. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Right, cheers. cheers. Thanks again to Josh and Aaron for taking the time to just share with us on this Finance Friday with the Finlay team video. I hope you guys are enjoying this regular series. If you are, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button if you're new to my channel, and make sure you check out these other videos with the Finlay team right here or right there. Again, they are absolutely crushing it when it comes to just sharing amazing real estate advice with us. And again, if you guys are interested in reaching out to anyone on the Finlay team, we're gonna throw a link in the video description down below.